Good morning, everyone. So good to see you in the house of our Lord today here on Baptism of the Lord Sunday. As you know, the lighting of our candles to begin our service represents Christ's Spirit. Now, we know the Spirit's in here because you're in here, but the idea is symbolical that His presence is gathered together. We're praying together, worshiping together. The Spirit is in control. Can we all say amen? We will light the candles. The altar is open if you'd like to take a moment and come and kneel or make the place where you're sitting a place of prayer. And the title of our prelude today is He. Say amen. Beautiful, Lori. Don't you just love that song? It's just beautiful. Praise the Lord. As you all know, the second Sunday of each month, we ask one of our Stephen leaders to give us our invocation to pray for us. We remind you at the end of the service, if any of you'd like to talk to Miss Holly, she's one of our wonderful Stephen leaders, and there's probably some others gathered here. You're more than welcome to find out more about that ministry. And the bulletin board is changed each week and has the flyers about Stephen ministry to my left in the narthex and i hope you'll stop by there miss holly good morning. good morning let us pray father thank you for all your blessings we have come here today to praise you and worship you we ask that our hearts be open to hear your word today so that we may learn more of what you would have us do bless all of us here today and be with all who could not be here. Lord, let your Holy Spirit be with us as we hear your word. We ask all this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Good morning and welcome to our worship service. Do we have any guests that would like to be acknowledged this morning? Yes, sir. Is there anyone else? The Welcome Center needs volunteers 
If you are willing to help, see Susie in the narthex and she will share with you the times that need to be covered and the responsibilities. Thank you. This afternoon at 3 p.m. will be a softball game. All are welcome. Monday at 10 o'clock, if you have a calendar, it says there's a Stephen Ministry Supervision Meeting. There will not be one at 10 o'clock. The training at 5 o'clock will be happening. On Tuesday, at, there will be a SPRC meeting at 6 p.m. in the chapel and the transition committee meeting at 6 p.m. in the conference room. Wednesday at 2 p.m., there will be the mission committee meeting in the hall. Seven, Thursday at 7 p.m. is the worship committee meeting in the hall. Remember, this is a new year, and there may be some new members on the committees. If you aren't sure and you have any questions, call the office. They have a list of all the members. Please listen as the choir brings us a call to worship. everyone will join me on for our hymn of praise if you'll stand and turn to page 252 and we will do all three verses of when Jesus came to Jordan when Jesus came to Jordan to be baptized by John Please remain standing, and Ms. Bonnie will lead us in our responsive reading. Our responsive reading is found on page 761, Psalm 29.
Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe, Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. Join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. may be seated. To open up our intercessory time, we have a brief video from the Global Methodist Church, and so we want to share that with you. It's hot off the press. If you'll look at the screens, and then I'll give you an update of where we are as a local church involving those circumstances. Yeah. <laughs> It's a little longer than that. Say amen. amen. I want to take just a few moments uh, and update you on our departure from the United Methodist Church. Our previous understanding was that we would have to have a church-wide meeting scheduled by mid-January, which would be right now. Our bishop's office, we had a meeting with them, has informed us that we have a larger window now than that. Therefore, we are presently in the process of disaffiliation. 
We are checking all the boxes and will hold our meeting in the spring. This will give us more time to see if the general conference that has been postponed for two years will definitely meet in September. If so, a decision can be made to wait till then and exit with all the other churches globally to join the Global Methodist Church. You will hear more information from our transition committee. It's meeting this week and there will be un ongoing meetings, but you'll hear more information from them. Our chairperson is Bob White. Bob's here today. He is also our administrative board chairperson for 2022, and he will give us an update in our upcoming newsletter. Uh, we have been told that by the council that sets the uh, general conference that they will know in the first quarter of this year, which would be the end of March, if they are going to have general conference. And so that still gives us enough time in that window to hold our meetings that we will need for you to vote to go ahead and exit through the annual conference, the state of Florida. And there's a lot involved with all of those areas, and you will hear more about that. So you just need to stay tuned. Uh, things are really picking up speed as we are in 2022. Can we all say amen? amen? We wanted that to be a matter of prayer. Now let me shift gears about praise reports now. And if you'll take your bulletin, if you have it, turn it over for our prayer concerns. My first praise report is that our own Lori, our organist, she operates in a number of areas within our church, is also now uh, uh, filling in as the organist for the Tampa Bay Lightning. She was there two times this last week. And uh, even one of our own uh, members, Lloyd, was there watching the ball game. I call it ball game, the hockey game. And uh, it's just absolutely amazing. There's at least 50 zillion people there. And uh, Lori is now their backup. Uh, she's done that years gone by from other uh, teams. And I just think that's amazing. Can you put your hands together? I think it's great. Lori, I want you sometime when you can on the screen there at uh, Tampa when you're playing, all of a sudden for it to come up, Dunnell and Methodist Church, you know, and if you're free and online, you know, I don't know if you can sneak that in there somehow. I heard somebody say my name, did I? Yes. Yes. Yeah, Lloyd. Oh, you weren't supposed to say that. I'm not going to ask Lori to play what she played when they won the game, the other team, but and of course, Lloyd, you were cheering on Tampa. We'll move on from there. <clears throat> Let me also praise the Lord this morning for uh, Lori again. She has started a youth choir, and I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to challenge you. I did this at the other services. In your community where you live, if you have some children that live there, uh, we have a wonderful program uh, not only on Wednesday nights, but uh, and that's when she's going to be doing the program for the music. We'd love to have them at five o'clock. Uh, but Sunday school, we have a wonderful program and just a few children attending right now uh, in that program. So I'm going to challenge you right here in the service before the end of the sermon, as I normally give you a challenge. If you have a children in your community, I want you to invite them. Go and knock on the door or call them or whatever it may be and and tell the family about our church a little bit. And just invite them to come. And I know that they will be thoroughly blessed. Can we all say amen? Amen. amen. For our prayer concerns uh, today, Jeannie Tarkington, uh, still in the hospital. This is Tom's beloved bride. Ina Murdoch, still in the hospital. Roxanne Barnes is in the hospital. Uh, Roxanne went to pick up her mother, Billy, that was in the hospital. Uh, Billy has been sick. And Roxanne fell, terrible fall, at the hospital. And they had to move her into ER. I saw her that evening and uh, bad, bad uh, bruise on her eye. She's much better now. Her dear friends Charlotte and Bonnie have been taking care of her. Some, some of the rest of you, I'm sure, have too, and Billy uh, as well. And really messed up her knee. We're not sure what all is going on there, but she is still in the hospital. Bonnie had just found that out. So, and she will be going to a rehab, it appears, uh, as well. So let's keep her in our prayers, okay? Can we all say Amen. Uh, those at home, Lisa Sly, we found out that she has a torn meniscus, and uh, so we just want to keep her in our prayers. Stephen, just let her know we love her, praying for her, uh, if you will. TJ and Marilou Jordan, I heard this week 
that they have not been well at all. And so let's keep them in our prayers. I know they're watching online. Um, the Drillick family, uh, they're always here, uh, Wednesdays and Sundays, uh, uh, little uh, Logan and Jordan, their family, big in softball. So we need extra softball players today. They all have COVID. So just let's keep that whole family in our prayers. They're great scout leaders as well. So keep them lifted up. Julie Goodry, let's keep her in our prayers. She's been sick at home. She plays music for us in the Thursday afternoon service. Uh, we have a number of folks struggling with pneumonia. Uh, Terry Hyjema's brother, um, Ellis. Uh, David Lamont, these are all members of our church. David Lamont's daughter, Rebecca, uh, the uh, parents are members of our church. Um, we want to remember Clara Coleman still in our prayers. Uh, Al and Alice's son, David, um, needs to start uh, chemotherapy. And so if we can keep them in our prayers. And today, you know, we're right at the time. John's the head of our safety team here. It's been right at one year uh, that Sandy went on to heaven. Can we all say amen? John, we love you and praying for you. Can we say amen again? And then I have one closing prayer. I know we have a zillion others uh, in our, that we have. You can put them on your prayer card, drop them in the offering plate when you leave, and they'll go on our prayer chain. But um, at the Lowell Prison in Ocala, the women's prison, remember we had the pastor there uh, come and speak to our women's retreat. Uh, the end of this month, uh, they're having a great event to raise funds for her salary. That's what she has to do. And, um, but it is a church within the prison, second largest women's prison in the country, right here in Ocala. It's called the Oasis. And it's, uh, but we have bought a table uh, for there and, you know, for the fundraiser. And we still have some room at the table uh, if anybody would like to join us and come be with us there. Uh, that's January the 25th. So if you're interested, call the church office and we'll get the information uh, to you if you'd like to be involved. A lot of testimonies of women that got out of prison that have found the Lord through her ministry, which is just beautiful. Uh, put her on your prayer list. Uh, Bonnie, as you come, uh, Pastor Chris. It's K-R-I-S, Pastor Chris. Hold these in your hands. Miss Bonnie, if you'll lead us to the Lord. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come to you this morning in praise and adoration. We come to you seeking wisdom and guidance. We're asking you to bless each one here, and may we truly feel your presence this morning and be with all of those that are with us online and also with those who are unable to be with us. Dear Lord, bless this country and our leaders. Help them seek your guidance. Be with our military, our EMTs, our firemen, our policemen and all of the caregivers. Lord, we know that they feel you with them. And we want to lift them up as they ask you each day for the strength to get through that day and do the job that you have put in front of us, them. Help us also to seek you for the, pe the peace and the strength we need each day as we go about the path you have in front of us also. Lord, be with our pastor and his family. Be with all those he has lifted up and all those who have been on the prayer chain for this week. Lord, we know that you know what each one needs and the best way to help them and that you are definitely taking care of it we know that it's not always in our time lord and we know that sometimes it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to us but we have seen you work over and over and over again to bless so many people and help so many people get through very severe trials and once again, that's what we're asking, that we can put our hands in yours, follow the path you have for us, and that eventually we will see where you have led. 
what you really wanted to happen and for the, the results that are so important to each one of us. Lord, be with our pastor and his family. Help him as he leads this church. Help all of the committees, and especially the committee chairman, as they start this new year with a whole lot of questions that need to be answered. Help us as we walk each day. May we truly feel your presence. Understand where you're leading us for that day, and may we truly touch someone so that they may seek you and find the peace and the satisfaction and the joy that they are looking for. Lord, be with each one here. And now, Lord, we lift to you our silent prayers. Lord, help those throughout the country who have been through storms of whatever nature and take all these silent prayers. We ask them all in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture this morning is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 3, verses 15 through 17. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Word. The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Messiah. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his thrashing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please remain standing for our next hymn of worship. Miss June and the choir will lead us. If you'll join me for our hymn of preparation on page 605, we'll be singing the first and last verses of Washoe God, Our Sons and Daughters. <laughs> Yeah. 
You may be seated. Before our choir blesses us this morning, I always like to mention a moment, if I can, about your giving unto the Lord. And those online, we encourage you to give unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, you can follow that online, and you can do that as well. But there's always offering plates around the exit doors if you'd like to leave your offering there. If you were not with us last week, you didn't hear that we uh, finished the year in the black. Can you put your hands together under the Lord? <laughs> Praise the Lord. And that's paying out all of our mission and all of our apportionments and all everything. And you were wonderful in giving to your staff. Uh, we divided that up among the staff. That was just a wonderful gift. I mentioned to you also on Christmas Eve, our offering to three areas in Kentucky for the tornado victims was right close to $7,000. Can we all say amen? Praise the Lord. That is, yeah, that's another clap offering. Well, I want to encourage you this year, this is always very important. When we have missions like the Oasis and Pastor Chris, we things like that that are separate than our regular budget, we take that to our mission committee to look and see if that can be part of uh, our programs. And so we have our meeting this uh, month. We looked at that last month as well and talked about it just a little bit. Um, our general fund takes care of the ministry of our local church and it continues to spread the gospel here and around the globe. Just like with this online service, people around the globe can be blessed uh, by our worship and our prayers for them. Just like our prayer quilts and our prayer bears as well. Can we all say amen? So our friends, thank you for giving unto the Lord. And I know that you're going to continue to do the same. Our choir will now bless us. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. Love that song, don't you? Amen? They have done a tremendous job all year and are blessing us going into the next year. Let's thank them again. Wonderful. <laughs> love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it. A couple of things to bring your attention before we jump into our message on Baptism of the Lord Sunday. Uh, the first one is yesterday we offered as a gift to our community 
uh, this facility for a community funeral. Family contacted us. They needed a very large facility. Uh, we checked what our boundaries are right now uh, relating to uh, rules and regulations. And so they stepped through all those hurdles. And I want to give special thanks to our safety team, John. Uh, we're here to make sure everything was taken care of. You may have seen tents out front there that was used as a to-go box for those that were gathered here. This was a previous police officer of Dunellen, served most of his time in Wildwood, so I think all Wildwood was here yesterday. There was actually a, almost a hundred, a couple hundred people here, and uh, I want to give thanks also to Andy, uh, uh, working the sound and just covering everything, and Bobby for uh, the cleanup duty, getting everything together afterwards. So we just appreciate that. And that was a tremendous um, a, a gift to our, our community, you know, and there's expenses involved and they covered all those, but uh, it is a gift to have a facility, this sound system, this type of atmosphere, and we've done that a number of times over the years, and I think it's just a, a blessing to be able to do that. Can we all say amen? Amen. amen. Now, the second thing I wanted to bring to your attention is next Sunday, and I hope all of you are going to be here. Uh, those online, you'll have to just, uh, well, maybe we'll use a video camera for you. Um, at the end of the sermon, not the end of the service, but the end of the sermon, we're going to end a little differently. Um, we're going to do a walk through our new history room. We've been talking about that for the last month and a half. Uh, we have a flyer out on the round table. We're going to be encouraging you, if you haven't picked up one, to pick one up that morning. And uh, it'll give you a guidance. And we're going to have you go in groups as we end the sermon in a process there, uh, meandering back behind the sanctuary. It has been well, well done, and it will be continually added to. I uh, want to give special thanks to Linda and Johnny Jones. Uh, Linda's our chairperson. Tremendous job. Tom Dykstra, he's up in the choir, did uh, uh, most of the woodworking, which is just astronomical. It's amazing what he's done. A lot of donations of antiques. Uh, it begins, this church is the oldest in our community of faith. Uh, not the oldest building anymore, obviously, but the oldest uh, in 1885, according to our records, we met under an oak tree about a mile north of this area. And so it starts off when you walk through, there's a symbol of the oak, oak tree. A lot of pictures, a lot of the old pastors, even some from the 1800s. Uh, a lot of history of Methodism back there. Even a corner of uh, books that we're going to begin to build, the library of John Wesley. I've got all of his journals. I've had my office for years. And you could sit down and read those journals of his words. Even when we are breaking out in the American Revolution, he's writing to his lay preachers. You can read about that. Uh, just It's amazing uh, some of the information we have back there. So we're going to do that. Now, how we're going to do that, I'm not exactly sure yet. But that's why we moved our worship committee. Brother Corey's our chair. Uh, we're going to figure that out this coming week. And then we'll direct you next Sunday. And it won't be for a long time. You can't stop and, and ponder back there uh, this uh, next week. But it'll, you'll have opportunities from then on to go back there. And you'll kind of know what you're looking at. And there's go, always going to be a bulletin board with, with activities recent. And uh, right now we have the float up there that we won. I mentioned that the last couple of weeks. First place in the Dunellen Parade. So we have pictures of that back there. But that'll be growing. Different ideas and thoughts. So I'm excited about that. Once again, can we all say amen? amen. All righty. Now let's jump into the message for the day here. Baptism of the Lord. Now, we know that Jesus was baptized by John in the Jordan River. Now, if you were here last week, and actually the last couple of weeks, we've kind of emphasized following the lectionary uh, of this process. You know, we've had Advent, we've had the Christmas season, the 12 days of Christmas. The 12th day of Christmas is Epiphany. We celebrated that last Sunday. And then always the Sunday after Epiphany is the uh, baptism of the Lord. It's the beginning of His ministry. And He is receiving a baptism of repentance. Remember, that's what John's baptism is all about. And we mentioned last week that that is probably one of the struggles of, of churches today, Christianity today around the globe, not just Methodism, but that we're trying to get people to heaven without them going through repentance. And repentance uh, is a biblical process. And God gave that to us, preparing Jesus to come on the scene and is continuing 2,000 years later Preparing us for salvation, of course. So there must be a baptism of repentance. But you and I know that Jesus does not need to repent of any sins. Yet, 
he comes to John, and of course John questions that. You know, why would you want me to baptize you? It should be the other way around. But Jesus said to fulfill all the prophecy, all the words that had been said. So we begin to try to understand what all that means. We know it's the beginning of his ministry. I've heard some people say, well, it's the idea that he wanted to experience everything that you and I experienced so that he might be our high priest, understanding everything about us, interceding to God the Father. And there, there's validity there. I like that. But there's far more, theologically speaking, going on there. Because he knew no sin. He that knew no sin becomes our sin. That means he's the perfect sacrifice uh, for our salvation. He that knew no sin becomes our sin on the old rugged cross so that we not just might be saved, but that we might be the righteousness of God. We are made righteous by his wonderful not just example, but his sacrifice. And so in that process, it's like he, he kneels in the water or stands at the water and, and it's, he's repenting of our sins. Think of that. Jesus was repenting for your sins at that moment because he has no sins of his own. Now, relating to the water baptism, we don't know how much water there was in the Jordan at that time. We don't know. A lot of people say, well, it must have been an immersion because the word baptizo, when you study it, you know, really means a full washing, a full covering. And it does, but it's used in a variety of ways throughout the Old and New Testament. So you really can't hold on just to that concept there. Um, prepositions meant sometimes we have them in the English, different in, for, some of those uh, can be used different ones for the same Greek word in some of those passages. So what I'm getting at is it's not clear how Jesus was actually water baptized and how much water was there. Now, in the Methodist tradition, we do not believe that the amount of water is the most important thing. You all know that if you have Methodist background or have been here at the church for a while. Um, we don't think the amount of water is the most important thing. We sprinkle, as you know. And as a matter of fact, this last week, I had the, the children from Harmony Preschool come over, and I follow the calendar I follow here on Sunday mornings with them. We do a little worship service, only about five to ten minutes, but we do that. I brought the baptismal font. I don't know if you've seen it, uh, ours over there by the uh, banner. And uh, when we do sprinkling, I brought it over here and explained how we did it, filled it up with water and took the water outside so they knew that we don't just throw the water down the sink. It becomes holy to us when we pray over it. It was just a wonderful moment with the children, them grasping as much as they can, of course. And we do sprinkle most of the time in here. We also do pouring in here. Many times folks will kneel at the altar, we put a towel around their neck, and we put a basin there below them, and we pour a pitcher of water over the, the top of their head, and it drips and sounds great. It's a wonderful experience for the congregation, uh, the pouring there. All of it's symbolical of washing away sin, right? Washing away that which is dirty and ugly and everything. It's a symbol, and washing that away. We don't do the pouring too much anymore. Uh, people you know, especially women don't want to mess up their hair. And I understand. I'm the same way. I don't want to mess up my hair, you know, on Sunday morning. So we don't want to do that. Uh, and then we go down to the river <clears throat> and we do immersion. I wish you saw the picture uh, that I had the other day when I did this with the children at Harmony. One of their teachers uh, came up to me right afterwards, Alicia. And she said, I want to show you my picture from my home church. And she said, I was just baptized. And it shows her coming out of the water with her hands praising God. It was just beautiful, beautiful. That's the kind of teachers we have next door. Can you say amen? That's the kind of teachers working with our daycare. You know, those are precious years, two, three, four-year-olds. That's, that's, they're being shaped for a lifetime. That's precious, and we have that opportunity here to bless them. Amen? And that's the kind of teachers we have. I just praise the Lord. So Jesus is there to be baptized. Now, I want to tie in for a moment, because this is how the Spirit began to lead me in preparation to all the way to Pentecost. Now, that's coming down the road, as we know. Pentecost, the 50-day celebration after the Passover in the Jewish calendar. We still follow that on the church calendar, too. We'll have a Sunday of Pentecost. Encourage all of you to wear red. We'll change our pyramids to red, representing fire of God. You know, when the church started and the Spirit was poured out upon everybody there. But you know, the Scriptures say that at that day there was a baptism and 3,000 were baptized that day. Can you imagine that? I know we kind of just take that number and say, wow, that must have been quite a gathering. 3,000. If you divide that by 12 disciples, that's 250 apiece. 
that they're baptizing. And some probably baptized more. Now, I don't know how they baptized them. I don't know what they did, you know. I honestly don't have any idea, but I cannot even imagine what that must have been like there in that experience. But it was very clear, and John the Baptist makes it very clear, that this water baptism, even at Pentecost, is a symbol of what should be going on in your heart. A baptism of repentance. You know, dear friends, people have got to turn from their selfishness to selflessness. That's what draws us to God. You know, when a person begins to do that, I don't care if they don't know anything about God at all, but when they begin to quit acting in selfish ways and even take a little bit of turn that way, the Holy Ghost, the provenient grace of God is just moving. Just He loves us so much, He's just looking for an open door. And that's what opens the door to draw close to us, that repentance in our lives. That's just beautiful. And, and full repentance, turning to Jesus, uh, ends up with a conclusion of salvation and eternal life. Amen? Now, the A of our ABCs today, to remember the message, it says all, all come out wondering, they're all wondering if John the Baptist is the Messiah. You know, they're all wondering that. And that brings the audience. Now, he's powerful, he's strong, preaching and teaching. And they're coming out, and, and he's wondering why they're all coming out. Some of them coming out for show. Some of them coming out for different reasons, you know, to be baptized. Some of them, there's peer pressure, you know. And John just puts it right on the head there. He just makes it clear, you know, why are you here? You know, and, and these are the signs of repentance. You know, this, in other words, if it's true, it's wonderful, wonderful. So friends, I'm going to ask you right up front here, why would you want to be baptized by the Holy Spirit? I'm assuming most of you, if not all of you, have been water baptized. But why would I want to be baptized by the Holy Spirit? I can hear John the Baptist saying that today. Why? You know, is it sincere? Is it real? And, and you might just say, well, I think that's what the Bible says, doesn't it? Yes, it does. I'm glad you asked that question. I want to give you a couple verses to remember this week. First one is Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. The Apostle Paul is writing there, and Paul says, Do not be drunk on the spirits or wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, he's addressing a number of Christians. Why would he tell Christians or ask Christians or give a mandate to Christians to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Because if they're a Christian, they've got the Holy Spirit. They've got the Holy Spirit. That's an interesting concept there. Do you remember when Jesus appeared to the disciples in the upper room after his death and his resurrection and he breathed on them? The Holy Spirit, it's in John chapter 20. So the Spirit of God is there. You cannot be a Christian, it says later on in 1 John, you cannot be a Christian if you do not have the Spirit. The Spirit is there. But the Lord also makes it clear that the Spirit is with you, but the Spirit will be in you, in you, powerful, controlling, in your lives. You see, and so I'm wondering, why would we want that? Well, the Word of God obviously tells us to do that. Well, then how do we do that? How am I filled and infilling of the Holy Spirit? Good question. Well, let's continue the message. The B of our ABCs today is the simple word baptism. Now, we mentioned about Jesus and being baptized by John and that he knew no sin he becomes our sin and dies on the old rugged cross. And John, it appears, hears the voice of God. Jesus hears it. Maybe everybody there heard it. Remember the scripture that was read a few moments ago? And the dove lights on Jesus. And the dove could be symbolical, could be a spiritual dove, could have been a real dove. We don't know, but it was like a dove. Lands on Jesus and the voice from heaven, this is my beloved son, and whom I'm well pleased is the old King James style of saying it. There's different phrases in our different translations. John hears that, you see. Well, what happened to John? We know that he was arrested. He was put in prison. We know that eventually he was martyred, of course, for his Christian faith. But you know what? John wondered if Jesus was the real thing. Now, how could that be? He baptized him. He saw the dove. He heard the voice from God. How could he ever wonder anything more? You know, that gives me tremendous inspiration 
Because if John the Baptist, the great John the Baptist, greater than a prophet, Jesus said, if John the Baptist can have some struggles, then I know it's okay that Eddie Fulford can have some struggles too. Are you there with me, congregation? Amen? It's okay. In our times when we're down and struggling and trying to figure out what's going on. I told you last week, I've been reading through the book of Job. And Job is struggling and, and, and all the world is falling apart around him. And his friends are not, not really friends, you know. Have you read through the book of Job lately? You know, they, they're, they're quoting the word of God to him. But it's sure not coming across as God. I want you to know something here, dear friends. You know, the Bible says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And we need to let God separate the wheat and the tares. We need to let God uh, do the punishment. We need to let God do those powerful things like that. We're called to encourage and strengthen. Now, there's nothing wrong with standing up for what you believe. Amen? You need to stand up for what you believe and rebuke. You need to do that in, in the Word of God. But make sure you're not like Job's friends. I mean, you know, make sure. And when you rebuke, then get on with your life. You know, you've done your job. Uh, you know, get on with your life. Those friends of Job, I'm sure Job was saying, I want y'all to go away. They were just after him, trying to convince him. That, just, that was not good. That was just not a good setting there. Now, again, I'm not trying to, to get you to deny who you are and standing up just like we're doing in our denomination. Stand up for what you believe. Well, we're ready to get on with the thing, right, Bob? We're ready to move on and do whatever it needs to do. And we're crossing all of our T's and dotting all of our I's. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And it's hard not to say something negative. And sometimes we do, and we need, to, we need to talk about that in our meeting the other night, including your pastor, Bob. We need to be careful about that. The Bible says pray for those that you disagree with, right? And not to speak. We do not necessarily need to speak. Speak the truth, but we don't need to be critical. May I say it that way? Somebody say amen. amen. That's just, that could be a, a hindrance to our church if we have the wrong spirit there in this process. So what do we do with this? This baptism of the Lord, John wondering himself in the story. I mean, what, what hope is there? Well, there's wonderful, exciting hope. We need to grow. Well, we know that. We need to experiment. Mm, I, I don't know about that, Pastor Eddie, it's according to what the experiment is. Well, church should be a hospital. And I want to see, you heard me say this the last couple of weeks, I want to see our church begin to to shake the, the heavenlies. I want to see us experience God. I want to see you expecting when you come on Sunday morning for something to happen, something to happen in your life, something to happen in the one you're praying for. And I hope you brought your prayer requests because we're going to lift them up here in just a moment in closing. I hope so. And I hope that you're going to believe that God is going to do a great work as we as a group pray for one another. Can you say amen? We are to encourage and to give hope the C of our ABCs is a warning, though. It says that the Lord is at the threshing floor. It's threshing wheat. Now, I know they don't do it like that anymore. But they're picking up on that, that floor. They're picking up with those big scoops the, the wheat. And they're throwing it up in the air. And the wind blows the chaff away. And it separates, you know, the, the, the tares and the, and the chaff. Tears it away and separates it. And it's up to the Lord to take care of that chaff, not us. We've already done what we need to do, make our stand for the Lord. Amen? That's what needs to happen. But it says that he's at the threshing floor, and the chaff, the chaff will be separated, will be burned up. What a warning that is. And what that means to us is we have a job to do. We have a job to do. Now, we don't need to build the fire for the chaff. <laughs> we don't need to execute the chaff. But we need to warn the chaff. We need to speak the word of the Lord to the chaff. But we need to do it in love. In love. Amen. The Lord is speaking to me as I'm saying that. I know. Because I need to do that in relations of, of our denomination other areas. We need to do that in love. And we need to pray through that. How do we do that? Speak to the Holy Spirit. Speak to the Holy Spirit. I know that we're comfortable speaking to God the Father. We're comfortable speaking to Jesus the Son. 
But are we comfortable speaking to the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is a person. He's the third part of the Trinity. Now, I know we don't understand that, but that's what the Word says. It's what the Word teaches us. And a person is not somebody who has a physical body. That's not what a person is. Has a personality, has feelings, has desires, has a will. That's why it says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. We've been listening to a, an evangelist this last week in our Thursday afternoon service, uh, evangelist Robert Morris. And he gave some great teachings on this, and I loved it. I just thought it was powerful what he was saying at the time. And his statements were very clear about our relationship with the Holy Spirit. We need to pray that the Holy Spirit comes and fills us. He is in you. If you don't know where he is, if you're a Christian, he's in you. And is the moment that you turn a little bit towards him, he takes a little bit ground. He's not going to take anything that you do not allow him to take. And his desire is that you encourage one another. Encourage one another. You know, I'm, I'm encouraged. I'm a big college football fan. I know Lloyd back here, we was talking about hockey. He's a big hockey fan. And, and you know, and, but tomorrow night for college football, Lloyd, uh, Alabama and Georgia are playing. Now, I don't watch the games. I like to follow the scores and read all the stories around it. It's just what I like to do. And I, I don't see his buddy and Cheryl here. They're big Alabama fans. I was going to pick on them. I don't see them here. But that's going to be a good game. I, I'm excited about that. I'm encouraged to follow that tomorrow night the way that I, I follow it. I'm excited. I'm encouraged that, that in a few minutes it's going to be lunchtime, and I think chicken's going to be on my menu. Amen? You know, I'm encouraged. I'm excited about that. You know, I'm enthused about that. You know, I have hope for that. And that's what we, the church, need to be offering to one another and to others. Hope. There is a wonderful book. Many of you may have read it from Corey Ten Boone about World War II. She was in the Nazi prison camps. And her sister Betsy, and Betsy died in the prison camps. And Corey Ten Boone used to speak at the Billy Graham crusade. Some of you may remember that. And you can still go online and pick up some of her testimony and stories. But in one of her stories from her book, they moved from one camp to another. And I'm going to tie this into next week. And I'm actually going to lift up this, this camp a little bit more next week. And um, it was known for all kinds of atrocities. But one of the worst, which was different than the others, it had a flea infestation. You know, I don't know what all's in heaven, but I hope no fleas are up there. Amen. No mosquitoes, no love bugs. Amen. <laughs> I don't know what all's in heaven, but I hope none of them are there. So you have that. And she looked at her sister in the, in the book and she said, you know, well, we must praise God in all things. Thank God for all things, in all things. Well, Corey Dean Boone, which is a saint... I having a little trouble thanking God for the fleas. Wouldn't you? You know, so it's, it's really a great story. And uh, she quotes the Bible verse. It's 1 Thessalonians. It's an easy one to remember because it's a lot like the one I just gave you. 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. Remember, I gave you Ephesians 4, 18. Not to be drunk in the spirits, but to be filled with the spirit. And now, 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. It's very, very clear what we need to be doing, it says, in all things, give thanks. In all things. Not for all things. Remember I talked a few moments ago about the Greek, uh, when you get into the etymology and the teachings and the direction of some of those, those words. It, it's not emphasizing, you know, thank God for fleas. But in the midst of the flea infestation, I can still have a thankful heart. Still have a thankful heart. And what do you think happened? Well, some of you may have read the story. If not, you're going to have to come next week, and I'll tell you. <laughs> and it's very hopeful, and it's very beautiful. It's a beautiful story, just a beautiful story of how God blesses even with the fleas. That's what the church, we should be blessing. Some of you are going through some really rough times, terrible struggles. And we're just going to take a few moments here before we close and pray about those. This is what church, I believe, should be. We're here to worship, to learn, to study, to glorify our Lord and to be a hospital and pray for each other, okay? Let's just take a moment. Let's just bow our heads. Lord, we just ask your blessings now to take care of everybody in this room, everybody online. May your Holy Ghost just fill us, love us, direct us, guide us, lead us. Lord Jesus, rebuke us if we need to. Forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us from unrighteousness. Holy Spirit, we pray directly to you. 
we're, we're, we're a little awkward there. We don't know how to do that. We always pray to the Father through the Son by the power of you, Holy Spirit. We know your job here is to glorify Jesus. But you are a person. You have a personality. The scriptures make that clear. So we pray to you, Holy Spirit, fill us. Because we know that means filling us with Jesus. Fill us. Guide us. Lead us. Direct us. We give you praise. Give you praise. In Jesus' name. Can you say amen? amen. Somebody give me a prayer request before we close if, that we didn't lift up today. Anybody in your family that needs special prayer? Just hold your hand up and I'll see. Has anybody got a special prayer request today? Joe, how about you? Liz, Father, we just ask that you be with Liz Martinowski right now, struggling with shingles, that you bring your healing touch. And may all of God's people say, amen. amen. Somebody else give me a prayer request, Bob. Michael, Michael. right? Yeah. Michael, Father, in Jesus' name, take care of Michael. We pray together as a church. Whatever that need is, just take care of him in Jesus' name. And may all of God's people say, amen. amen. I saw some more hands over here. Yes, Linda, let me get Linda first. Yes, ma'am. William, Father, in Jesus' name, take care of William. And may all of God's people say? Amen. Catherine? Tom. Tom, Father, in Jesus' name, take care of Tom. And may all of God's people say? Amen. Amen. I saw Sissy? Tyler. Tyler. Tyler is her grandson. In the name of Jesus Christ, take care of Tyler and all of his surrounding family. And may all of God's people say? Amen. 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 Did I see another hand over here? Don? Brother Carl, in the name of Jesus, whatever the situation is, we pray for Don's brother Carl. And may all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. I see in the far back, but I can't see who it is with the light. Yes, ma'am. Brown? Yeah. Ralph? Father, in Jesus' name, take care of Ralph as only you can. Congregation, pray for Ralph. And may all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Sean, way in the back, back there. Keegan, your son, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord be with Keegan. Keegan has grown up here, and Sean, we're just so glad to have them. And may all of God's people say, yes. Amen. Your neighbor, yes, sir. All, my family and friends. all the family and friends, the neighbor of Sean here, in Jesus' name, to take care of them. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Anybody else right here? Yes, ma'am. Pat? Carol, the all the granddaughters with the uh, pregnancy, right? Heavenly Father, take care of Pat and Ivan's granddaughters and Carol as well. We pray for your healing touch. And may all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Did we see right here? Yes, Sam. Stephen. Stephen. Thank you, Jim. Um, God, take care of Stephen in Jesus' name. Whatever the need is, bless them. Anybody in the choir? Yes, Rick. Amen. 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 If you know Brother Rick, he's waiting on this beloved from Cuba. Her name is Griselle. Father, we pray together in Jesus' name that everything will be released. We need a miracle there. So release from Cuba so that she can be here. And may all of God's people say, Amen. amen. Yes, ma'am. Mark, in Jesus' name, we pray that your Holy Spirit would be with Mark, Nancy's request, whatever the need is there, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me go over here. Yes, ma'am. Kathleen, Father, we just pray in Jesus' name, Gloria's daughter, Kathleen, that you just take care of her, whatever the need may be. And may all of God's people say, Amen, Amen. amen. Yes, Jerry. Tom and Ken. Tom Cadwell. Tom's not been able to be here in a year or two. Lost his bride a while back, Lord, and he's had so many health issues. We pray in Jesus' name that he be taken care of. Amen? Amen. Yes, ma'am. Neighbor Robert, Father, in Jesus' name, that you take care of Robert and bring your healing touch in Jesus' name. And may all of God's people say, Amen. I'm going to stop right there because I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do over the next couple of weeks. I'm going to do this at the close of the services when we get the opportunity as just a, a prayer chamber. And uh, I didn't put my hands on anybody. A lot of times when you put your hands on people as you're praying for them, the Spirit of God just really moves. I've had people just start shaking when I got my hands on them just because they feel the presence of God. Um, so I'm, I was reluctant to do that today, but I will do that in the future and just just take a few moments. I know that you're anxious to get your chicken. I understand that. But I just want to take a few moments and pray. I'm just sensing this year that God wants to do some miracles. And I just, we just need to be praying more for each other than ever before. Can we all say amen? 
Amen. Let's all stand together for our closing hymn. Miss June and the choir will lead us. If you will join me on page 347, and we'll sing the first and last verses of the Spirit song. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come to the end of our service. We thank you for the message you have given us through words and through song. And may each one of us have received the message you had for us this day. May we take your growth in us and use it this week to touch someone who may finally find their way to you. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. be seated, if you will, for our postlude today. Our symbolism as we take the light of Christ to the world 
in which we individually live in. You may be the only Christ. You've heard that saying, and I know it's almost cliche, but it's so true. You may be the only Christ that some people see. Amen. The title of our postlude is one you will know very well like the prelude. This is titled, I Saw the Light. Let's rise together. May the blessings of Christ be with you and wave at your neighbor. We'll see you next Sunday morning.